question number 63 is eventually going to involve us using the Pythagorean theorem. What I'd like to do before we actually start the problem on your sheet is I would like to show you where the Pythagorean theorem came from, just sort of geometrically, a little sketch of it. This isn't, this isn't actually a proof, but it gives you something to look at and see. Something I'd also like you to know, too, is Pythagoras, who is credited with the Pythagorean theorem, did not actually come up with it. He had his followers kind of steal the idea from the Babylonians. If you have some free time, it's really kind of fun to go to Google or some other search engine on your computer and type in Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem. Just Google on that and you get to read a little bit of the history of Pythagoras and it's just kind of interesting to see what he was all about. He had some really strange thoughts and kind of fun to look at. All right, let's go to my paper. Y'all come with me. Okay, here we are. Let me get my cord so I can write. All right, now I'm not actually doing question 63 yet. What I'm going to do is I am going to draw for you a right triangle. And of course, the reason you know that it's a right triangle, let me move my paper and get organized here. Here we are. The reason you can tell it's a right triangle is because this little notation I put in the corner indicates that this is a 90 degree angle. These two sides are called the legs and this side is called the hypotenuse. Traditionally, the legs are given lengths A and B and the hypotenuse is given length C. You can use any letters you want to, but that's pretty much tradition. If I were to turn this side into a square, and if I were to turn this side into a square, and if I were to turn the longest side into a square, the area of this square would be A times A, which is really A squared. The area of this square would be B times B, which is B squared. And likewise, the area of this square would be C times C, which is C squared. And what you'll notice from the geometry picture, I used to love showing this to students in high school, this area plus this area is equal to the big area. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. What I'd like you to know in the future if an instructor asks you to state the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is the result of the theorem, but it's kind of nice to know this picture to start with. At least draw a triangle whose legs have lengths a and b and whose hypotenuse has length c, and it makes this bring on a, a better meaning to really understand what you're doing. Now, problem number 63. On our paper, we need to draw a right triangle. We're told that the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, has length 10 centimeters. We're told that one of the legs has length 8, and the other leg I don't know the length of, so we'll call it x. Now, if I apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle, x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. x squared plus 64 equals 100. x squared is equal to 36. And if I apply the square root property, x is actually equal to either a positive or negative square root of 36, which is 6. So it appears as though we have two answers, a positive 6 and a negative 6. But think about this. X in this problem represents the length of a side of a triangle, so we're going to eliminate the negative choice and just stick with the positive. So our final answer here for X, the length of the missing leg, would be 6 centimeters. It's kind of a cool little use of the Pythagorean theorem. But don't forget to Google.